Hi there teachers, here is the Suheti School assessment template. I'm just going to quickly run through it and show you how it works. When you open up the template, it kind of looks like this. You've got various places where you're going to click and just select your options. And then you've got a place down here for information and instructions. And I've placed some default text just so you can see a sort of overview of what it actually looks like. Let's start from the very top. If we have a look here, it says select type. What you can do is you can select the type of assessment this is. If it's just a standard assessment or a class test or maybe it's a quiz or a task, for example. If you don't want to use anything here, you can just select the blank area there and that'll take it away. So then you don't have to see that printed. If you do want to go back there, just click back where you are and then you can go back and select something. I'm going to just select assessment for the moment so we have something to look at. Then we have the subject area here. You can then see that I've got all the subjects in a drop down list. Just go ahead and select your subject there. The grade, pretty straightforward. And then you can also select the type of assessment. If this is assessment one or two, paper one or two, a practical, a theory. You can also change these and add any ones of your own in there as well. If you don't want to have anything there, again, you can select nothing like that. Again, that's also possible. So I'm going to use paper one as an example. Scroll down a little bit to the next section. We can also then select an examiner and you can choose your name from the list. All right. So let's do uh, there. Well, there's the geography teacher there. And you know what? I'm going to make myself the moderator. So everything is alphabetical according to a first name. Right. The date is simply just a date picker box. So we can choose anything like that. I'm just making up stuff here. So here you can see the hours. I've made it as easy as possible. Again, you can also update this and change this at any point if you want to. If you want to know how, just give me a shout. Right, and I've just manually typed in the marks there. Now, if we scroll down, we have the information and instruction section. This is just a basic numbered list. You can just click and type and it's just a basic numbered list that you are used to. Now, before we carry on, the best view or the best way to work with this template is to in my home tab. OK, I'm going to go to my styles section over here and here is my little call out window for lack of a better phrase. I'm going to click on that and it's going to pop a window on the right hand side of my screen. Sometimes it might do something like this. OK. And you'll see a window sort of floating there. Just grab it like that, drag it onto the right hand side and it just pops in there. So put your styles on the right hand side and you're going to see in a few minutes why this is important. OK, I'm going to show you why. Down to the bottom here, you've got show preview. Just click on show preview. That'll give you a preview of what the style looks like. I kind of like this because it's nice to have a visual preview of what you're going to format your text with. OK, so that's the styles part, guys. Please make sure you do that. It'll really help you. Right. Moving on, you will notice in the header of your document that this header over here is automatically generated for you. You do not have to go and edit anything in the header as well as the footers. If I go down to the bottom there, you've got the footers over here automatically created for you. And you will also notice that it also does a please turn over on the pages that you need. All right. So that's the thing over there. So let's go back up to the top here. Oh, back up to the first section. So depending on how you set your papers, we have a section area, which is formatted with a section style. Then you have your question number. OK, that's formatted with the question number style. Then we've got our numbering options. So here we've got 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. Everything is governed using your styles on the right hand side. So please make use of that. This is how you're going to set your papers and you're going to use your styles. It's really, really going to help you. If I scroll down just a little bit more, just to show you a couple more things before we actually do any work together. Here we have a subtotal for question one. There it is there again. That is governed by the subtotal style. So pretty much everything has a style. So there's very little formatting that you need to do for your paper. Here we have like a scenario text. You know, when you have a story or a bit of introductory text that you want to uh, introduce for the question, we have a scenario text. Now, remember these styles 
we can adapt them, we can change them and make them work for specific subject requirements as well. Here you can see we have another example, 2.1, okay, and then we move on to another level, 2.1.1. Uh, again, it's governed by our styles. Here we have the subtotal again and the end of a section. Here you can see another type of style where we have multiple choice questions. If you're using multiple choice questions in your paper, we have a style that will do this for you. And if we move down, we also have another style that will do 4.1.a, 4.1.b. Okay, do you see? So we really can do pretty much everything. So I'm going to move on. I'm going to move to a new page, okay? And I'm just going to reset everything to normal here. So let me show you how we actually begin working with a style sheet and making sure that your paper looks the way you want it to look. Okay, so what I've done is I have removed the pages of all the other content so we can start from the very, very beginning. Now, what's really nice is you can just type in whatever you want to type in. So there's section A. I'll just put an A there. Hold on. Section A. And then we have question one. And then we'll start with our numbering 1.1, 1.2. So section A, all I do is click inside this paragraph and it's going to be modified or, or formatted with the section style and it modifies it automatically. Question one, I just go here, and that's the question number style. Click on that automatically. Right, so it's time to start with our first level of questioning. Now, you've got two choices here. You can start off with what I call level one, okay, and it looks like that, and you will then type in a question just like that, and then you press enter. It'll go into number two, number three, number four. That is what is level one. That's what I call level one. But what if we don't want level one? What if we want to have 1.1 and start with that? That's more often the, the most commonly used one. So let's just go back. Okay, you'll see I've just kind of deleted everything. Gone straight back there. This is my normal style. That just removes everything. If you want to, if you get stuck with anything, just click normal. That'll clear everything in that paragraph for you. So let's start with 1.1, which is a level two style. There it is there, level two. I'm going to click on level two. It automatically puts 1.1 there for me. And I can then go ahead and type in my question. There it is there and press full stop. And there is my question. If I press this, the enter key now, it'll automatically go on to 1.2. There it is there. Now, what about the numbering, okay, in terms, not the numbering, the, the marks. So let's have a look. So in question 1.1, 1 .1, uh, let's say that's worth one mark. Now at the end of this sentence, here it is there, or this question, let's say it is a question, and I want to do one mark. You, there are two ways to do this, teachers. You can either press the tab key, okay? The tab key will jump all the way across to the end of the page and then you can type in your bracket in the one and then the bracket again. But I have tried to make life a bit easier for you and I have made a little shortcut that does that for you and you just literally hit the keyboard shortcut control shift one control shift one and that will jump to the end and put a number one at the end and you will notice if this question carried on it will not go past that number. Okay, do you see what's happening? The numbers will always be to the right of your text. They won't be misaligned or aligned in places where they should not be. Okay, so just to recap that, if you wanted to put the mark allocation for that question, you can either press the tab key and type it in yourself or use one of my keyboard shortcuts. So control shift one, we'll put a one over there for you. Control shift two, we'll put a two. Control shift three, we'll put a three, all the way up to nine, control shift nine. Okay, let's add a 10 mark question, then it's control shift T, T for 10. Okay, so I've gone all the way from one to 10, literally just using keyboard shortcuts and your alignment will not get messed up. Now, Let's say this is the end of question one and it is time to put the subtotal for question one. That is control shift S. Control shift S will also just put in subtotal for question blah 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 and then you just go ahead and type that in. If that is the end of your section, 
I just go end of section A and I, do you notice I just pressed enter to go to a new paragraph I click inside this paragraph here and that is the end and there it is over there you will notice in terms of the order of the styles I've tried to make it that the styles are placed in a logical order of how you would most likely be using them so hopefully that'll help you as well in terms of moving from one question to the next now a slightly tricky part and this is working on moving to the next question now let's say you have got to go on to question number two I'm going to start that on a new page just so that we have a clean page to work with and I go and I choose this level two but you'll notice that it starts at 1.3 which is obvious because I mean the last question we did was 1.2 we need to just tell Microsoft Word that this actually needs to be 2.1 so what do we do right click on that number 1.3 we go and we say set numbering value so we're going to just say set numbering value we're going to continue but we're going to advance to the next number so do you see what I chose there I'm going to choose a number 2.1 all right this is the hardest thing you'll probably have to do in this template okay so now we're on 2.1 off we go off we go off we go there and again if you want to use your tab key so if I wanted to then move on to the next level for example so watch this uh, 2.5 if 2.5 is actually supposed to be uh, 2.4 point whatever I just press my tab key and it jumps to the next style which is 2.4.1 if I press my tab key again it jumps to the next style which is 2.4.a if I press my tab key again it then moves on to the multiple choice and if I press my tab key one more time it jumps back to 2.1 which is totally up to you guys how you want to do this all right so those that's a very quick uh, crash course on using the various levels okay uh, if I wanted to do multiple choice I could just tab 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 there's one there press enter there's an option there press enter there's an option there press enter there's an option there back uh, shift tab will take me back okay to decrease my indent so shift tab will always take me back you can also use your increase and decrease indent buttons here at the top these are quite important if you don't remember the tab or shift tab on your keyboard okay so that's another way of using the styles and working through the various levels everything else is created for you automatically put together for you let's say you have some text here and this is more of a story uh, or a scenario or just a bit of information and you want that to stand out we do have a scenario text block so here is my text over here and I click on scenario text and it just pops it into a box for me right away so that is what the scenario text does and of course if I go ahead I'm just waiting for this thing so okay if I go ahead and just press enter it'll take me to a new paragraph and I'm fine I can carry on I'm going to move on a little bit here to one more part and that is if you are doing a write on papers if you're doing a write on paper so let's add in a question over there let's say this is question three so I'm going to right click set numbering value continue from previous list advanced value set value to 3.1 okay now I would like to do a write on paper and I've got my question over here and it's worth five marks so control shift five that puts the five at the end there now when I press enter obviously it's going to go into 3.2 but I'd like to have some lines for the students to write on because I'm going to print this out so I'm going to go down here and I'm going to go to line number one so I press line number one and you'll think like oh well, nothing's happened well you have to tab watch this so tab and tab and there's my line press enter tab 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 there you go and there are your lines okay if you want to start the next question go back to our level 2 3.2 let's type in our question let's say there is a 3.2.1 and there's a bit of information there and now you'd have to like them uh, you'd have to like them write something down my English is terrible I'm sorry guys right watch this I pressed enter obviously it's going to go to the next one but I don't want to do that I want to do this is actually an indented line so this is line number two have a look tab and tab oh actually I think it's line number three 
Yes, it's line number three. Tab, 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 tab. And you see, we can actually change all of these lines depending on whatever it is we want them to look to look like. Okay. And we can adapt this. So if you want to adapt this for your subject, just come and see me and I will help you adapt it so it works just the way you want it to. So you will see, guys, everything, Control shift s pops that in there. I can do subject titles, section, question numbers. Everything is controlled with your style sheets. You hardly have to format anything. Your alignments are taken care of, your numbering, your marks, they are all taken care of. If this was the total over there, even the, the total at the end is taken care of with a total style. There it is there. Okay, so if you have any questions, please pop in and see me. The last thing I need to show you is when you save this document. If you save this document as is, okay, it's going to be a doc M file because it contains what we call macros. Macros are those keyboard shortcuts. Now, when you want to send this to someone else, it is kind of important, rather save this as a Word document, please. A standard Word document if somebody else has to edit this or uh, as a PDF. Uh, you know how to do a PDF, but please don't send docm files because the firewall will block them. And that is no good for you or the person who will not be receiving that file. Okay, any questions, send me a, an email or a chat in Teams. Thank you very much and have an awesome day.